This video is one of the three-part series looking at the most common serious diseases in pet ferrets, insulinoma, adrenal disease, and lymphoma. In this video, we will focus on adrenal disease, but links to the other two videos on lymphoma and insulinoma are contained in the description below and with links at the end of this video. As always, you'll find in the description below a list of publications and studies which support all the facts and statements I make in this video. So let's jump right in. A ferret has two adrenal glands, which are small to medium-sized hormone-producing glands, situated in the upper abdomen near the kidneys. In the healthy ferret, the adrenal gland produces a number of different hormones that control a variety of bodily functions, from water to electrolyte balance. In the diseased or overactive ferret adrenal gland, there is typically an overproduction of the sex hormone. The most common form is hyperplasia, or excessive growth but tumours, both benign and cancerous, may also be seen. Metastasis, or the spread of the tumour to other parts of the body, is not that common, although some adrenal tumours can be quite invasive locally, spreading into nearby organs or blood vessels. There are various medical terms for specific nuances in adrenal disease types, but for the purposes of this video, we'll simply refer to adrenal disease being the unnatural and uncontrollable growth in adrenal gland cells. Adrenal disease is a common syndrome in ferrets, usually affecting middle to older age ferrets from 3 to 7 years old. It is the third most commonly diagnosed tumour in ferrets, with a reported prevalence of around 25%, depending on which study you read, the other two being insulinoma and lymphoma, which are covered in our two separate videos. While some studies have compared the relative likelihood of getting adrenal disease versus other diseases, there isn't yet a reliable source for the likelihood of a ferret getting adrenal disease over its lifetime, although this is quite a difficult statistic to identify accurately. Different commentators put the incidence of adrenal disease in ferrets anywhere from 20 to 70 percent of the population in North America, so it is difficult to narrow down on a true incidence rate for the disease. On the other side of the Atlantic, a survey in the Netherlands in 1997 looked at the incidence of adrenal disease in ferrets, covering 1,274 ferrets and identified only seven confirmed diagnoses of adrenal disease. Therefore, the authors simply concluded that the incidence of hyperadrenocorticism was 0.55%, i.e. the seven divided by the 1,274. The 0.55% figure from the survey was identified as a prevalence rate i.e. the existence of the disease at a specific point in time. A point in time statistic has limited use in the real world, and unfortunately some readers have taken this to mean the likelihood of the ferret developing adrenal disease at any point in their life. This is not a correct interpretation of the study findings. It is perhaps a missed opportunity that the survey didn't produce a useful statistic such as the likelihood of a ferret developing adrenal disease at any point in its life or the likelihood of it developing adrenal disease by a certain age, five years old, say. The background data did exist to provide such metrics, but they weren't provided within the survey. There are typically a number of complications in such studies, which naturally lead to an underestimation of the disease being monitored. These complications arise from missing the true number of adrenal disease cases because the cases were not formally diagnosed, owners don't or didn't go to the vet, other illnesses were more apparent and masked the adrenal disease, misdiagnosis of the disease, or an inherent bias due to the selection of the groups for the survey. All this goes to show that incidence rates are just as uncertain in the US as they are in the UK and Europe. Sterilization is known to be a risk factor for adrenal disease in ferrets. However, it is not proven that it is a cause of adrenal disease. Therefore, sterilization doesn't mean that a ferret will get adrenal disease, it's just that it's at a higher risk of doing so. Whilst experts and studies have not identified conclusively that sterilization causes adrenal disease, they have identified, for those who do have adrenal disease, why it arose. The exact reason is somewhat complex, but it goes something like this. When the ferret is surgically neutered, it no longer produces sex hormones from its ovaries or testes. These sex hormones were needed to regulate the production of other hormones in the brain, specifically one called the luteinizing hormone. This luteinizing hormone is now produced in excess volumes and is continuously stimulating the adrenal gland. With time, this extra strain causes cell damage and mutation, and hence tumours start to grow in the adrenal glands. Research has also shown that there is a significant correlation between the age of sterilisation 
and the age of onset of adrenal disease. Studies on both sides of the Atlantic have shown that if adrenal disease is to occur, it will occur three and a half years after the surgical sterilization. This same three and a half year relationship was found to exist regardless of what age the surgical sterilization happened. In North America, Marshall Farms sterilized their ferrets at six weeks of age in order to standardize the ferret as a model for laboratory work. Unfortunately, this same practice is carried out for their ferrets provided to the pet market. As a result, studies in North America identified that Typically, adrenal disease arises around three and a half years of age, whereas in Europe and the UK, adrenal disease typically arises on average around five years old, that being three and a half years after a typical neutering age of one and a half years. Sterilization at an early age, when the endocrine system has not yet fully developed, is a controversial point relating to future hormonal problems. Early sterilization has been theorized by some as leading to adrenal disease, given the relationship between the ovaries, testes, and the adrenal glands, all of which produce sex hormones. However, elsewhere, experts draw attention to the lack of scientific conclusion in this area and conclude that early sterilization is not in itself a unique risk factor for adrenal disease. Rather, it is one of a number of factors which, in combination, ultimately lead to the disease. Ferret's ancestors evolved in the northern hemisphere with a photoperiodic reproductive system. This means that ferret's sex hormones are triggered by changes in the length of daylight. After the winter solstice, when the days start getting longer, ferrets react to the longer daylight hours by releasing sex hormones which bring on the breeding season. The changing of the seasons is therefore a necessary part of the healthy function of a ferret body. Keeping ferrets indoors has been proposed by experts as a possible risk factor in the development of adrenal disease. For indoor housed ferrets, the hours per day of light exposure would be much greater than the natural light experienced for outdoor housed ferrets. This gives those indoor ferrets an unnatural year-round exposure to light, which results in unnatural levels of hormones being produced. Indeed, the issue is not exclusive to artificial light. Those ferrets kept in locations with lower seasonality will be subject to much higher levels of daylight on a constant basis throughout the year. The excess exposure to light, whether artificial or natural, creates excess levels of hormones. These excess hormones produce additional strain on the adrenal glands and therefore lead to cell mutation and damage and ultimately at a higher risk of developing adrenal disease. In humans, there are certain genes which have been identified as having tumor inhibiting actions. These genes do not exist in the ferrets and therefore they are just more genetically predisposed as a species to developing certain cancers and tumors. A genetic background has also been suggested as an underlying factor for the development of adrenal disease, as changes in certain genes have commonly been found in adrenal tumors. However, this is far from being conclusive and it's just a suggestion at present. Finally, in terms of differentiating the occurrence of tumors between different ferret populations, the lower genetic diversity in the North American ferret population is thought to be a contributor to the apparent higher incidence of adrenal disease over there than it is in Europe and UK. Signs of adrenal disease have been seen in ferrets as young as two years old, but are most common in ferrets older than three. There is considered to be no sex differential, with occurrence seemingly similar between males and females. Progressive hair loss is seen in more than 90% of ferrets with adrenal disease. Usually, the hair loss is symmetrical on the left and right side of the body, and it starts in the tail and moves its way up the body to the shoulders, eventually covering the vast majority of the body. Although, interestingly, there does not seem to be a correlation between the severity of the disease and the extent of the hair loss. In more than a third of ferrets with adrenal disease, pet owners report their ferrets as excessively itchy, and in some cases this may be the only symptom. Another common sign of adrenal disease in ferrets is sexual behaviour in ferrets that have been sterilised. This would involve the usual in-season signs, such as for gills, the enlargement of the vulva, and for hobs, the appearance of the testes, increased aggression, and increase in odour. Of course, this is not a reliable indicator for ferrets which have not been sterilised. On physical examination, the adrenal tumours may sometimes be palpable as small to medium-sized masses, although in many cases the size of the tumours are too small even to be identified in an x-ray. Abdominal ultrasound scans are one of the single most useful tools in identifying adrenal disease, with blood tests also useful to identify elevated levels of certain hormone. Although, unhelpfully, in 8% of ferret adrenal cases, there is no elevated hormone levels. 
the treatment option for ferrets with adrenal disease is surgical removal of the gland or both glands or with long-term hormone medication. When considering surgery, the left adrenal gland can be fairly easily removed. However, the right adrenal gland is more difficult and carries more risk because it is attached to an important vein and is in close proximity to the liver. While surgery is often quite effective, recurrence of the disease is seen in around 15% of patients due to development of the disease in remaining adrenal gland tissues. In addition, studies suggest that unfortunately around 6% of patients may die during a procedure due to surgical complications. For medical management, the drug desloralin comes in the form of a small implant around the size of a grain of rice, which is placed under the neck and is a slow-releasing drug which suppresses the production of the problem hormones. Immediately after the implant, owners may notice a worsening in clinical signs due to the surge in hormones from the implant, but thereafter the implant should start to work and see a reduction in clinical signs. Under medication, the size of the tumour is not expected to decrease but rather the medication will deal with the symptoms of the disease. In a study comparing the size of adrenal glands in gills having received surgical neutering compared to gills which have had the hormone implant, showed that over a period of six years, the size of the adrenal glands were significantly larger in the sterilized gills than with those with the hormone implant. A finding of the study was that these hormone implants can act as a preventative mechanism for ferrets which has not yet been surgically sterilized. In a comparison study of treatment options, the average disease-free period after treatment was found to be 16 and a half months for those on the implant, with a range from 0 to 30 months whereas it was 13 and a half months for those with a surgical treatment with a range from 0 to 38 months. On the basis of this survey, medical management is often recommended for the treatment of tumours, although there's clearly not much in it. Those with adrenal disease can live for several years with the condition, and in some cases, surgical intervention can be curative. However, the prognosis is highly variable across ferrets. It will depend on factors such as age, type of tumour, and the existence of other concurrent diseases. Whilst uncommon, if the disease has spread to other areas of the body, the prognosis is generally quite poor. So what do we know? We know that adrenal disease is a tumour of the adrenal glands, which results in uncontrolled excessive production of the sex hormones. This causes widespread hair loss and exaggerated sexual behaviour. Surgical and medical options can prove quite effective at extending life, although outcomes are highly variable on the circumstances of the individual. Whilst none have been individually scientifically proven, the key risk factors are considered to be excess exposure to light, sterilisation and genetics. Each of these are experienced differently in North America than Europe, and hence in combination are theorised to explain the apparent higher incidence of the disease in that side of the Atlantic. Be sure to click on the other videos in this series on lymphoma and insulinoma, and we'll see you over there in a second. And for those of you who have finished the series, thanks for watching, and why not try some of our other videos on the channel on ferret health and husbandry.